Would you please pray with me? O oh, Holy One, come to us now in this time of reflection and meditation. Touch our hearts and stir our spirits through your word for us this day, O oh God. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart please you and honor you and glorify your holy, holy name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Making all things new. Making all things new. The title of my sermon this morning is Making All Things New. These words, these four words, since this past summer, have become a theme, so to speak, across our denomination, the United Church of Christ. And as you may know, making all things new was the theme of our biennial UCC assembly this past summer, which took place in Indianapolis this time, not too far. And in fact, if you'd like to learn more about it, you could talk to Greg Halby or Matt my, uh, Matt Stevens, they both were able to attend for a time. Now, at General Synod this time, one of the many resolutions that was passed was to amend our long-standing denominational bylaw regarding the frequency of our General Synod assemblies. And so, in the near future, within a couple of years, our meeting schedule will change to every three years rather than every two years. The, and by the way, this resolution passed by just one vote. <laughs> Can you imagine that? This is certainly an example, a denominational example of making all things new. Now, Many of you know that within our denominational structure, we are part of the Heartland Conference of the UCC, which includes all of the local associations throughout Ohio as well as Northern Kentucky. And our conference annual gathering will take place later this month on the last weekend of September nearby in Canal Winchester, if you'd like to go. And the conference organizers decided to stick with the same thing, theme, making all things new. And here, at the local level, First Congregational Church is part of the Central Southeast Ohio Association of the Heartland Conference. And our fall association meeting will take place the last weekend in October and what do you suppose we selected as our conference theme this year? Making all things new. And if you'd like more information about that assembly, just let me know. I'm on the planning committee for that meeting. And so you see, our UCC theme of making all things new has been significantly shaping our denomination at every level. And therefore, this theme of making all things new has certainly been on my heart during these past few months. And during the last couple of weeks, as I have been engaging this familiar gospel reading from Matthew about conflict and struggle and reconciliation within the earliest form of the church, the theme that has emerged for me for this sermon this time is making all things new. Now, you might recognize these words, making all things new, from Scripture. They come from the prophet Isaiah in chapter 43, verses 18 to 19 which, by the way, is not our Old Testament reading for this morning. However, however, as I was reflecting on our Gospel reading from Matthew recently, 
I heard these very words of Isaiah behind Jesus' teaching that day, so to speak, as his disciples gathered around him to soak up the wisdom and the inspiration of their beloved rabbi and leader. Now, we know from the Gospel of Luke that beginning at a very young age, Jesus became a student and also a teacher of the Holy Scriptures. And in all four of the Gospels, Jesus regularly references the Hebrew writings in his teaching. But the prophet who Jesus quoted the most often was Isaiah. And so here in our text for today, which is found in the 18th chapter of Matthew and comes from a section of Matthew that is known as the Discourse on the Church, Jesus is advising and instructing his disciples about church conflict. Now, in this particular teaching, it is significant that Jesus doesn't promise that disagreements and conflicts can be or even should be avoided. But rather, Jesus gives his followers and us today some clearly defined steps of an intentional conflict resolution process that was appropriate for that particular context in that particular time within the earliest Christian community. And so it is here in our gospel reading this morning where we find Jesus inspiring and empowering his followers to the higher task of reconciliation. And he even equips them with this very specific approach to use when divisions invariably arise. And so, in our text today, Jesus offered his disciples hope and promise and a new way to make all things new. I so appreciate the insights of the Reverend Dr. Jin S. Kim, who is the senior pastor of the Church of All Nations in Minneapolis who wrote about this text. Dr. Kim said, what makes us Christian is not whether or not we fight, disagree, or wound one another, but by how we go about addressing and resolving those issues. These are powerful words. Let me repeat those again. What makes us Christian is not whether or not we disagree, fight, or wound one another, but by how we go about addressing and resolving those issues. I wholeheartedly agree with Dr. Kim. As a covenantal people living together within community, Jesus always calls us to the higher task of reconciliation and resolution while we continually imagine and reimagine our life together as the church in the world today. <coughs> Excuse me. Try this again. It's a pastor preacher's nightmare. <laughs> Our gospel reading for today is indeed about making all things new. As we all look around First Church today, it is evident that God is making all things new. 
on this very day, we have formally welcomed seven new members into the life and ministry of First Church, and three more from our new member class will be joining at a later time. God is making all things new. As you already know, today is the first day of Sunday school for all ages. And there is much enthusiasm and support for our new curriculum called Godly Play, as well as our new Sunday Stories ministry for young children during worship. God is making all things new. Our full choir is back in the chancel today singing gloriously under the direction of our new-ish Minister of Music, Josh Stafford, who has also put together a robust calendar of concerts for this coming year, God is making all things new. Our new Stephen Ministry team has been meeting weekly for a few months now for training, and later this fall, they'll be commissioned to provide one-to-one -one care and emotional support for those who have such a need within our congregation. God is making all things new. Later in October, we will hold our first Healthy Congregations Workshop for the congregation, which will focus on strengthening leadership skills, communication practices, and conflict resolution. God is making all things new. And wait till you see what our Church Vitality Commission is planning for our Legacy Sunday celebration in just a couple of weeks. It's going to be so much fun for all ages. God is making all things new. I'd like to close this morning with some words of prayer that were written by the Reverend Ted Loader, who is a retired Methodist minister and author, and he's 93 years old at this time. Let us pray. Help us to believe in new beginnings, to make a beginning, to be a beginning, so that we may not just grow old, but grow new each day of this wild, amazing life that you have called us to live together with the passion of Jesus Christ. God is making all things new. Amen.